Hi everyone, I'm Fan. Today I'm going to share with you a Dreco Ranch. This is one of my go-to setups because aside from necessary grooming and shearing, everything else is fully automated. And this ranch allows shearing for both hungry and non-hungry Drecos. The design was inspired by a Dreco Ranch I saw a while ago, but I've made several optimizations and simplifications of my own. First, let's take a look at some key information about Drecos that we need to know before building this farm. Drecos come in two types, glossy Drecos and regular Drecos. In addition to basic drops like meat and phosphorite, regular Drecos produce reed fiber, while glossy Drecos produce plastic. These materials are collected through a shearing station. Plastic in early game is a very valuable resource, and without access to oil, shearing glossy Drecos becomes one of the best ways to obtain it. Each shearing yields 150 kilograms of plastic, which is quite a generous output. We also need to know that the growth environment for Drecos and glossy Drecos is hydrogen, which means they can only grow their scales in a hydrogen atmosphere. Now let's talk about what Drecos eat. If you want to breed glossy Drecos, their food must be mealwood plants. Note that it's the mealwood plant itself, not the meal lice. Each Dreco consumes 25% of a mealwood's growth progress per cycle. When a Dreco feeds, the plant's growth progress is reduced accordingly. Lastly, let's talk about the movement path of Drecos. When a Dreco encounters a one-tile high liquid lock or a two-tile high body of liquid, it won't be able to pass through the liquid directly. By observing the Drecos' navigation path, we can see they don't move through the air locks or liquid I've placed for them. However, there is one situation where a Dreco can move through an airlock if the airlock is exactly at a turning point in its path. For example, in the setup I'm showing now, when I place a Dreco inside, it can pass through the airlock by making a turn. But once it's crossed over, it won't be able to go back because the airlock is now part of its straight line path. Additionally, juvenile Drecos cannot pass through any form of liquid lock. All right, after understanding these points, I can now share my Dreco farm with you. First, we divide the farm into two parts, left and right. The right side, where the mealwood grows, requires an oxygen environment while the left side, where the Drecos develop their scales, needs a hydrogen environment. We separate these two areas within liquid lock, but both still belong to the same room. The meal wood on the right needs to be kept between 10 and 30 degrees. We use one or two Weeswarts to cool this area and control their operation with a temperature sensor linked to the airlock. If the temperature gets too low, the door opens to stop the Weeswarts from working. The storage bin in the lower right is for storing dirt, allowing the auto sweeper to fertilize the mealwood automatically. Weeswarts use phosphorite as fertilizer, which is exactly what Drecos excrete. When Weeswarts need fertilizer, the auto sweeper will pick up the phosphorite from the ground and deliver it. The left side of the farm is divided into two levels. The lower level is the standard ranching area, where we only keep normal Drecos. Since the space below is exactly 96 tiles, we raise eight glossy Drecos, and six mealwood plants are just enough to feed them. The upper right area is our starvation ranch, where all excess Drecos are thrown in. This room is only for shearing and no feeding. The upper right area is our Dreco refill system. These three pneumatic doors and the two liquid locks are the core of this setup, as they control the movement path of the Drecos. The small liquid lock on the left prevents juvenile Drecos from passing through. The pneumatic door in the top left separates the incubation chamber below it from the critter sensor on the right, ensuring that the sensor only detects critters in that single tile. When the sensor detects a critter, this pneumatic door closes to prevent more critters from entering. Now let's talk about what the three pneumatic doors do. When the lower ranch needs more Drecos, the top two pneumatic doors will temporarily close. Now I add an adult Dreco into the chamber. The adult Dreco will pass through the corner liquid lock and climb upward. 
When a Dreco is detected by the critter sensor in the small chamber, the first pneumatic door opens. Since Drecos cannot turn back due to the rear door being shut and the liquid lock blocking the path, they have no choice but to move forward through the first pneumatic door. Once the Dreco enters the door, the sensor can no longer detect it, so the door closes again. But the Dreco is now inside the door, and without a foothold, it falls down into the lower ranch, completing the refill process. When the lower ranch doesn't need more Drecos, both of the upper pneumatic doors stay open. In this case, any Dreco entering the chamber will crawl along the wall and the third pneumatic door, pass through the liquid lock at the corner on the right, and reach the starvation ranch. Since they can't come back through the liquid lock, they stay in the room waiting to be sheared. The third pneumatic door should always stay closed. Its purpose is only to provide a walking surface for the Dreco and make sure it falls down smoothly. So how do we control these doors? Let's start with the three on the right. Here I've used two critter counters and an OR gate. The OR gate works so that when both input signals are red, it outputs a red signal. Otherwise, it outputs a green signal. In this setup, the two critter counters and the OR gate control the first door. We want this door to close when a Dreco is inside it and the lower ranch is missing Drecos. That means when the lower ranch is short on Drecos, the sensor there outputs a red signal. And when a Dreco moves from the small chamber into the pneumatic door, the sensor in the small chamber also outputs a red signal. This way, the Dreco will fall down successfully. All we need to do is set the sensor parameters according to this rule. For example, in my ranch, I keep eight Drecos, so I set the lower sensor to output green when the critter count is greater than seven. This way, when there are seven or fewer critters in the lower ranch, it outputs red. The sensor in the small chamber just needs to be set to output green when the count is greater than zero. The second pneumatic door is simpler. It just needs to open when the lower ranch is full, so the liquid lock on the right forms a corner, and to close when Drecos are missing, so the liquid lock and pneumatic door form a straight line. The third door can stay closed all the time. As for the pneumatic door in the upper left, it only needs to close when there's a critter in the small chamber, which can be done by connecting a knot gate. If you haven't understood what I've explained so far, that's fine. Just follow my steps when building and you'll be fine. The trickiest part of the whole process is the liquid lock. Now let's get straight into the construction. First, outline the outer frame of the ranch, making it 11 tiles high and 18 tiles wide. Then build tiles and ladders in these positions. Then place the bottle emptier at the position shown in the video. Now we'll use the bottle emptier above to pour in the brine. Here, I'm using brine and water to create the liquid lock. Brine or salt water is relatively easy to obtain in the early game, but if you have crude oil or petroleum, they will work even better for the liquid lock. Then we remove the insulated tile directly above the tile so the liquid can flow down. Then we use the lower bottle emptier to pour in clean water. We rebuild the two insulated tiles we removed earlier, and with that, the two liquid locks are complete. Once the lower section is filled with two layers of liquid, we can remove the bottle emptier and the tile beneath it. Now we wait for the liquid to stop flowing. After the liquid has stopped flowing, mop up the excess within the exact area shown in my video. This will keep the liquid lock from being broken. Next, we remove these two tiles, starting with the top tile and then the bottom tile. This ensures the liquid lock remains intact. Next, we transport one bottle of brine and one bottle of water to the bottom right corner, then empty them one after the other. This creates a two-tile high liquid lock, which mainly serves to restrict the Dreco's movement path. Then, as before, wipe away the excess liquid using the same method. Then we build two gas pumps to start vacuuming. Usually, at this point, we don't have plastic yet. If the external pressure is too high, we can build a gas reservoir, root the gas into the reservoir, and finally remove the reservoir. Next, we can build something that won't affect the vacuum process. 
Here, just follow my video to build everything. There is one insulated tile not built here yet, because later we still need to carry water up to make the liquid lock. Here we need to carry about 100 gran of brine up. Then empty out this brine, and afterwards replace the insulation tiles. Here I need to mention that if your room already contains gases suitable for mealwood growth, you should build this step first to separate the two rooms. Then the right room won't need to be vacuumed. The vacuuming in the video is just for demonstration. Next, we move a small amount of water to this spot, keeping it below 38 gram. Then empty it out, and this way we get another liquid lock. The purpose of this liquid lock is also to restrict the Dreco's movement path, so our sweepers can collect the meat dropped when the Dreco's die. Next, we continue building and wait for the module to become a vacuum. All right, now the entire module is in a vacuum. You can check this through the materials or temperature panels. Then we can remove the gas pumps and pipes. Then we build all the remaining parts. Don't forget to build doors at the exits and keep them open so that the Drecos won't climb onto the walls. Now let's check the room, it's exactly 96 tiles. Now we continue to complete all the constructions. It's okay if duplicates can't reach the planter boxes above. We can drop icewort seeds on the floor and the sweepers will automatically plant them for us and it's best to set mealwood to disable automatic harvest. Now we need to introduce gas into the farm. The hydrogen environment on the left side has no pressure requirement, so we can guide one tile of hydrogen over using a gas bridge, then remove the gas bridge and that section of pipe. Of course, we can also directly supply some hydrogen. Now the left side is completely filled with hydrogen. On the right side, just input some oxygen to meet the pressure requirements. Then disconnect the oxygen, wait for the pipes to empty, and dismantle them. I forgot to add the temperature control automation just now, so I'm adding it now. Now the entire ranch is fully built. Let's set up all the parameters. On the left loader, select fiber and meat. The two loaders on the right should be set to Dreco eggs and glossy Dreco eggs, respectively. If you want to breed glossy Drecos, you can swap these settings. The two critter counters are set to greater than zero and greater than seven respectively, and set to count critters. If you think eight Drecos are too many, remember to adjust this critter counter. Set the temperature sensor to activate below 20 degrees. Select dirt in the storage bin at the bottom right corner. Set the timer sensor to cycle mode, green for two cycles and red for 0.1 cycles, so the Drecos eat once every two cycles. Then we catch a few Drecos and the whole ranch officially starts running. If you worry that sometimes too many Drecos get added, you can also add an automated notifier to alert you when there are too many Drecos, but the chance of this happening is very low. Finally, I'll show you my wiring setup. This is the circuit overlay. The airlocks on the right don't need power. 
Then, the automation overlay. The timer sensor is connected to the grooming station and the shear station to disable these buildings during the Dreco's feeding time, preventing them from missing their meals. This is the conveyor overlay. That's all for today's video. I hope this video can help you. If you find my video useful, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching, I'm Fan, and see you in the next one.